my dear Rose Wani I'd give the world to be among the folks in the IX I even know my mammy is praying for me praying for me down by the Swanee the folks up north will see me no more when I get to that Swanee shore this is Great Chefs of the South a culinary tour of the Southland featuring the talents of some of the region's finest chefs. This time from Louisiana, Susan Spicer. From Georgia, Clifford Harrison. And from Tennessee, Renee Anzalone. Susan Spicer's Bayona in New Orleans' French Quarter was voted the city's top overall restaurant in the 1996 Gourmet Magazine Reader's Poll. It was also awarded top food and top presentation honors. Chef Spicer's first course is indicative of her imaginative style. It's Bayona's crispy smoked quail salad. Uh, the, the salad itself is a spinach base with celery, hearts, and leaves. We also use these little pickled red onions. And what they are basically is, is uh, thin sliced red onions that are pickled with a combination of sugar, red wine vinegar, and uh, jalapeno. And these have already actually been cooked. We boil that to a syrup and then we put it in the, uh, pour it over the onion. And then we drain them and let them cool. And we reduce the syrup that we reduce the juice because the onions give off a lot of uh, liquid and we reduce that to a syrup let it cool and then pour it back over and that intensifies the flavor so I'm going to be doing that and uh, the other thing some pecans that we toss with a, a little bit of melted butter Not too much, and this gets sugar, salt, cayenne pepper, and a little bit of lean parents. Kind of hard to 
you don't want to have too, too much butter, and you're going to sort of candy these, and they uh, crisp up real nicely in the oven. Okay. Now we have the uh, quail. We're going to make a little marinade. These are just whole quail. The marinade starts with some honey. And a little bourbon. Have a, a sweet soy sauce, Indonesian style soy sauce. That gives it a good color and just a tiny bit of uh, peanut oil. And that's going to be the marinade. And what we do is we throw the quail in the marinade. We do these overnight because we do so many at one time, but uh, they really just need to marinate for about half an hour to an hour. And then what we do is we, uh, we cold smoke them, which just means that if you have a little uh, Mr. Smokey or something, there's a, usually a drip pan. And in that drip pan, instead of uh, just catching the drippings or a flavoring ingredient, you put ice and that controls the temperature of the smoke coming up from the wood. So that's, uh, that's kind of a nice way to do things at home sometimes if you want to get a little smoky flavor but you don't want to cook your meat all the way. After we marinate the quail, and these have been marinated, we cut off the little wing tips. We saute them, get a nice color on them, and pour a little chicken stock over it and saute that down. Kind of gelatinous stock we're going to put in here. We use that as a basis for our uh, vinaigrette. Then we're going to put, at the same time that our stock is reducing, we're going to put a mixture. We use two kinds of vinegar. I use a apple cider vinegar, and I found um, a walnut vinegar, which is kind of interesting because I've always used walnut oils. Uh, and hazelnut oil, and I find that they just um, go bad pretty quickly. And this walnut vinegar is really nice because it's got a strong flavor of walnut, but it uh, has a much longer life. And I, I like to use vinegars in a lot of different things, so it works out real well. So we're reducing that. Add a little bit of molasses. Shallots. These are just uh, fresh chopped shallots. I'm going to pull that off. It's got kind of a nice syrupy consistency. I'm going to whisk in some oil. Protein from the stock and the uh, and the molasses help make a really nice uh, vinaigrette. Uh, what else am I going to add? A little bit of the bourbon. You don't want to add too much bourbon because it kind of will make it bitter. A little more cayenne. A little bit of black pepper. And I'm going to taste for the balance. Mm. Good. Nice. The smoked quail are coated with a mixture of rice flour and water. It's going to make a little bit of a thin paste. Now we're going to take our quail, which have already been smoked. We're going to pop them right in the just hold it by the tip. You want to, you can see that it coats the uh, quail, but it's not a thick, a super thick coating, but it's nice. And you're going to put it right, drop it right in. And you want to see some activity. Deep fry for three or four minutes. 
meantime, we're going to chop a little celery. I like to use the hearts, the real tender pieces. Just cut them. If you go all the way up, it's okay to use some of the little leaves, too. Uh, we have some nice fresh spinach. We're going to make a... can arrange some of the prettier leaves on the outside. Around. Some of the celery hearts. Turn that fire down. I'd say, what does that take? About, takes, I would say between three and four minutes for that quail to cook. And we're going to take some of our pickled onions that's already chopped. Sprinkle some of that in. And we'll spoon in. Toss a little of the dressing in with it. Not too much. Just enough to glaze the leaves. Oops. Pile all of these goodies up. You want to be able to see some of the uh, Sliced pear is added. There we go. We're going to put those nice pear slices so it's visual, textural. We're going to take our little crispy quail, cut it. You can see the breast is still, it's cooked through, but it's still nice and pink and juicy. We're going to divide it into breast and leg pieces. Put those, arrange those around. We're going to drizzle more of the dressing around. And up. Put a couple of our nice here. whole pecans and then break some of them up.
Bacchanalia is one of Atlanta's hottest restaurants. It was transformed from a 75-year-old house by owner-chef Ann Quatrano and Clifford Harrison. In 1995, both were named among America's best new chefs by Food and Wine magazine. Chef Harrison offers the entree, horseradish crusted sea bass. Is it's a uh, Chilean sea bass fillet you can get from the store. It's very nice white fish, which is very moist. It's a very moist fish. You can cook it a lot, and uh, it still stays flaky and, and great. What we'll do is we'll put a little bit of this is a shiitake mushroom. Put a little bit of olive oil on top of those. Crack a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of the sea salt. We'll take some horseradish, put it on top. We take some panko, which is Japanese breadcrumbs, put that on top. Take this, we stick it in a 500 degree oven for. I would say about four to five minutes. Put this on the thing. Now the garnish for this plate is pea shoots. Another garnish is enoki mushroom, and the base for the sauce is a fermented soybean paste, miso. The miso is combined with chicken stock. You can add as much miso as you want for the strongness. It's a paste, so you can either go very strong are very light, depending on your own your own taste buds. And um, sometimes when they make miso soup, they make it very light. We make our miso a little thicker. We let it reduce a little longer, and we add a little more miso to it. So what we have is we have a flame here. You can get this uh, anywhere. And what we'll do here is we'll take the fish out. The mushroom's been done. You can tell the mushroom's been done. It's kind of nice and soft around it. You don't want to overcook the mushroom so that it's going. Fish cooks pretty rapidly. We just brown the top of the breadcrumbs. If you have a broiler, you can stick it in a broiler, but this seems to work very nice. You want to get them nice and crispy. I think it's very important in cooking that, especially with sauces and garnishes that you you taste things and you I'll slice it up. I'll have that. We have a few gnocchi mushrooms, which we put in raw because if we when we cook them they fall apart. So they're very nice and we're just gonna put a little bit of sauce on it, a little bit of the miso. We go down on top of that plate. We'll take these, put them there. Like that. Squeeze a little bit of lemon on top of the mushrooms and the pea shoot. I crack a little bit of sea salt on top of it. I have a little bit of sesame seeds in there. We also have a little chive oil and a little yassi, which is a soybean vinegar combination. Take the fish off, stick it right on top, and then on the very top we use the yuzu which is a citrus soy sauce mixture from Japan. And uh, there you go.
Renee Anzalone is pastry chef at the busy and eclectic Boundary Restaurant in Nashville. She is basically self-taught and began baking in her mother's restaurant in western New York. Her dessert is a variation, among many, of the classic Bananas Foster. It's Bananas Foster Chimichanga with rum walnut sauce. Okay, today for dessert we're going to prepare Bananas Foster Chimichanga and we're going to start out with uh, six firm ripe bananas. And I'm just going to chop one for you. You just want to chop them uh, medium. You don't have to chop them up small. I'm just going to quarter it. And very quickly, just chop it. I already have um, the other five bananas in my kettle. And then I'm going to add one cup of golden raisins, one lemon, the zest and the juice, a quarter cup of dark rum, and then a half cup of, of uh, brown sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon. And we're just going to stir that up and put it on the flame. I'm going to put it on a medium high flame. You just want to cook it until the sugar melts and the mixture becomes thick and starts to bubble. It takes about five minutes. When your bananas are finished, you just want to take them off the heat. You want to put them in a small bowl and just put them in the refrigerator to cool. And while the bananas are cooling, we're going to make our walnut rum sauce. And again, it's very simple. And again, we're going to start out with some brown sugar. You want two cups of light brown sugar, a two-third cup of half and half, one stick of butter, Three, four, excuse me, four tablespoons of instant coffee. Six tablespoons of uh, dark rum. And then two tablespoons of light caro syrup. I'm gonna stir that and put it on the flame. And you can just leave this. We're just gonna cook it till it comes to a boil. We'll bring it to a boil. We'll cook it for an additional four minutes to reduce it down a little and thicken it up. Then when it comes off the heat, we're going to add a cup of chopped walnuts. And I'm just going to set this aside. Again, you want to keep it out at room temperature. You don't want it to get cold. You want to serve this warm. So I'm going to leave it right in the pan. Egg wash goes on a flour tortilla. You want to put about a half a cup of filling in the burrito. You don't want to put too much. And I'm going to add a few chunks of white chocolate. You just want to press it right into the filling. And I'm going to roll it up burrito style. You want to roll it up nice and tight. It's going to fold the ends over. And then what you want to do is you want to take your burrito and you want to put it in a deep fat fryer. The oil temperature should be 350 degrees and you want to uh, fry it till it's golden brown. And I have one that's already been fried. All right, the banana has been fried. It's a nice golden brown. And when you take it out of the fryer, you just want to sprinkle it uh, with a little cinnamon sugar. And then to plate it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it at a bias. I'm going to get a scoop of cinnamon ice cream. Now what you can do if you can't find cinnamon ice cream is just buy a good premium uh, quality vanilla ice cream. Let it sit out for 15 minutes. Put it in your mixer and add about a tablespoon of cinnamon for two pints of ice cream. And that should serve six. So you can just make your own at home. Put the ice cream down. Then we're going to put the burrito down. And then to hold the burrito in place, what I'm going to do is I have a little kebab. It's got kiwi, strawberry, and a little white chocolate truffle. And I'm just going to skewer that right in there to hold it up. I'm going to add some of my warm uh, walnut rum sauce. Pour a little on the ice cream around the plate. Then also another easy garnish you can do is you can just take some cut uh, tortilla strips and fry them when you throw your chimichanga in the fryer. Sprinkle them with cinnamon and you can add a little height to your plate. Just prop them up into the ice cream. And we'll finish it off with a sprig of mint. And you have a very simple dessert.
full-color companion cookbooks are available for the Great Chef series. The hardbound edition of Great Chefs of the South is twenty-eight seventy, including shipping and handling. Save with the hardbound five-book set of Great Chefs Great Cities, Great Chefs of Hawaii, Great Chefs of the East, Louisiana New Guard, and Southwest Tastes. A $150 value, now only $129, including shipping and handling. Send your check or money order to Great Chefs, Post Office Box 56757, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70156. Or use your credit card by calling 1-800-321-1499. Today. Sammy is waiting for me, praying for me down by the Swanee. The folks up north will see me no more when I get to that Swanee shore. 